Um, and a broader question from Mandy that I think will sort of help a wide swath of patients. I am just di diagnosed with having breast cancer by my doctor. What are the tests that I need to make my treatment as precise as possible? What's the name again? Mandy. Mandy. <laughs> uh, Mandy, this is a really big question. It requires, it, every cancer is so different. Breast cancer isn't just one test, but I'll do my best to give you an overview. Um, it, it's usually a team, a team uh, effort. The medical oncologist, the breast surgeon, and sometimes the plastic surgeon will speak with each other and they have something called the breast board or breast conference where the person that reads the biopsy called the pathologist, the radiologist, and the radiation oncologist are all in the same um, room or Zoom uh, really discussing what needs to be done. So each individual case is very special. but. Uh, usually breast imaging, let's start with the imaging prior to even a biopsy or even right after the biopsy. Typically after seeing the uh, mammogram or ultrasound, biopsy is done, you diagnose breast cancer. Some breast surgeons like to get an MRI of the breast. It helps evaluate the extent of the disease more accurately and it helps evaluate the lymph nodes in the underarm or uh, axillary lymph nodes. And sometimes they order just an ultrasound of the axilla to check the lymph nodes because if they are there, uh, sometimes they like to biopsy them and do, put a clip in them so they can find them when they go to do the surgery. So there are little things here, but there's such detail uh, management that's hard to really uh, paint a full picture, but ultrasound, mammogram, ultrasound of the axilla, potential MRI that shows the breast and the axilla and the relationship of the tumor to the skin, to the chest wall, to the and the rest of the breast to make sure there is no other tumors outside of the one that was already biopsy. That's in terms of the imaging. Now that biopsy that was performed also needs a lot of tests performed on it, specifically ERPR HER2, that's estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and HER2 receptors that are done on the tumor biopsy, and that will be critical for your doctors to decide what's the next step. Is the next step surgery, or is the next step some treatments before surgery based on those receptors? Sometimes we do we use a test called Oncotype DX, but that's very specific to a certain subtype of breast cancer. Not everybody gets that test. Very helpful. Is there any genetic testing that you routinely recommend or very specific? Actually, to the there, course? back in the time, it used to be very restricted uh, indications for genetic testing. We used to do it only in people of strong family history if they are very young at the time of diagnosis. But now, because there are treatments are approved uh, for specifically approved in a genetically driven breast cancer, we broadened the indications. Almost everybody with breast cancer deserves genetic testing because it helps in their surgical management. It helps advising their families, but it also helps indicating specific treatment that are now approved specifically for genetically uh, driven breast cancer. So if anybody below age 60 or with or without family history, any triple negative breast cancer, it really is a broader indication. The genetic testing have become cheaper, easily accessible, and a lot of the companies that do the genetic testing also provide genetic counseling. So even if a person is in a remote area where there is no genetic counseling, just obtaining the test will allow you to have access to a genetic counselor to give you all the information you need. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy, that was a good question. Yeah, no, I mean, it's amazing, uh, you know, the extent of information that's out there that we can get from genetic testing. It's fascinating to see what an impact it's had on cancer treatment.